everybody, dear students. So wherever you are, I hope that you are really safe. Stay at home and follow us. We are here for you in order for you to be at home uh, safe, okay? So my name is Rizlan Eshul and I am a teacher of English. Today, I'll be presenting uh, some classes, okay, starting from unit 7 to unit 10, but today especially I'm, I'm going to uh, present you unit 8 uh, of, uh, of uh, Common Core, you see, which is concerned about science and technology. So all the students of Visa to the world are welcome in this class. So, of course, as I said, we have technology and science. The whole world has advanced in technology and science. And we have to know a lot of words that are related to this uh, domain, okay? So, as you see over here, we have some pictures that are related to, the, to, to science and technology in general. We have the human brain that, invent, that, that has, over the years, invented a lot of useful inventions, okay? We cannot deny this. We have a scientist, so we're gonna move on to this uh, later on. We've got labs, which is short for laboratories in which we have, in which we conduct scientific uh, researches. We have a laptop, okay, and we have some technical, other, uh, other technical devices. So let's move on. So, in this exercise, I'd like you to match the electronic devices with their names. Of course, when you say the word device, uh, we can say, for example, a mobile phone is a device. Um, uh, a calculator is a device. So, so all of these are devices. So I'd like you to match them along with their names. And I give you just a few seconds to reflect on the exercise, please. So to correct, the first one is pen drive. A lot of people say flash drive, a lot of people say, uh, say USB, okay? So you're free to choose any word you want. So it's a pen drive. So whenever I say a word, try to repeat it after me. This way you will, you will learn how to pronounce the word correctly. The first one is pen drive. Repeat, pen drive. The second one is laboratory. This is a laboratory when we have, it's the place where we have scientific uh, research. The third one is scanner. So this is a scanner. Repeat scanner. And the third one, normally they are just um, uh, switch, no problem. So this one is a laptop, okay? It's a laptop. We name other uh, electronic devices. Do you know the name of this device? It's a dishwasher. Repeat, dishwasher. Of course, this is not, uh, it's more concerning, it's more uh, concerned with uh, science than technology. And this is what we are all uh, afraid of uh, nowadays. This is a virus, okay? It's a virus. Repeat, virus. These are like uh, most teenagers use them uh, nowadays, okay? We call them headphones. In English, they are headphones. And of course, do you know this picture? It's a satellite, all right? Repeat, dishwasher, virus, headphones, and satellite. Now move on, I already told you that we're, we were gonna move on to this picture later on, and that's the time for this picture. Do you know this woman? This woman is considered to be one of the most important scientists in the whole world. You're going to discover why, because we have a conversation in which two people are explaining why this woman is really, really, really very important in the field of science. So her name, sorry, her name is Mary Curry, all right? I'm sure that most of you know her since you have studied in other subjects. So her name is Mary uh, Curry. Now, please, I'd like you to note down these uh, questions because you're going to have a conversation and you have to answer these questions by saying whether they are true or false and you are asked to justify the false uh, sentences. 
So I give you a few seconds to write down these uh, examples. So have you written all of these questions? Now it's time to move on to the uh, conversation. Let's read the conversation all together. So it's a conversation between Steve and Chris, and it's about, of course, as we mentioned earlier, it's about Mary Curry, the scientist. So listen to me very carefully. Try to answer the questions. At the same time, take, uh, pick the, the, the right pronunciation of the, of the words. Ah, you're studying for the test, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm just reading about some great scientists. Oh, that's interesting. Do you know Marie Curie? The physicist? Yes, I know her. She was French, wasn't she? No, she wasn't. Her husband was. Uh, where was she from? She was from Poland. But she married and lived in France, didn't she? Yes, she did. She was the first woman to win the Nobel Prize. I know, she won the Physics Nobel Prize in 1903. Yes, and eight years later, she won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. She was a great scientist, wasn't she? Yes, thanks to her, cancer can be cured today. So this is the conversation. So let's go back again to the questions and answer them. So the first one says, Mary Curie was French. So was she French? You already read the conversation and now you've got the answer. So the answer is false. Mary Curie was from Poland, okay? She wasn't from France. The second one, her husband was French. Yes, true. Her husband was uh, uh, French and she lived with him in France. Number three, she won the Nobel Prize in 1911. Do you think that this information is true or false? Of course, it's true. Yes, she won the Nobel Prize eight years later in chemistry. The first Nobel Prize was in 1903, and eight years later, she won another Nobel Prize in chemistry. So if you add 1903 plus uh, to eight, it gives us 1911. Okay, so that's, yes, so here I'm I just want to highlight some questions that, 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 uh, that will help me go to the grammar lesson, okay? So here, aren't you, you're studying for the test, aren't you? The physicist, yes, I know her, she was French, wasn't she? But she married and lived in France, didn't she? She was a great scientist, wasn't she? Of course, maybe you have read this in one of the texts, but you never had it as a lesson. And we also know that we have only two types of questions. That's a question, but we have only two types. So where does this come from? The two types of questions that we have are WH questions that starts in um, where, when, how much, why, whatever, and we've got yes or no questions. So when I ask you, for example, are you a teacher? Yes, I am. Are you happy? Yes, I am. You see, so these are yes or no questions. So here comes the third type of questions, which we call uh, tag questions or question tags, okay? So question tags. We can add question tags like, isn't it, can you, or didn't they, to a statement to make it into a question. Why do we use question tags? What is the importance of using question tags? We often use question tags when we expect the, listeners to, the, the listener, in general, to agree or disagree with our statements. I don't want you to answer my question. When I use a question tag, I want you to say whether it's true or not, whether you agree or you disagree with my opinion. This is the importance of using question tags. And so now we come to the form, how we can form question tags. So in this case, when the statement is positive, 
we use a negative question tag and vice versa it means when the statement is negative we use a positive question tag let's have a look up here sarah is a doctor so this sentence is positive that's why we put it into the negative form we by, by the way for question tags we put in the in the place of the question tag only modal verb and you have already seen modal verbs and auxiliary verbs along with the verb to be so is becomes isn't and we replace sarah with she because sarah because you cannot say isn't sarah here we're gonna have repetition so in order to avoid uh, repetition we replace sarah with she the second example yesterday was wasn't so much fun as you see over here the sentence is in the negative form we replace yesterday with it and we replace wasn't with was because as we said earlier the negative form becomes positive in the last example you've got a modal verb which is can or can't okay and you've got other modal verbs that you can that have the same uh, form of year so you can't play soccer that's negative the negative becomes positive and we keep the same pronoun okay i hope you have understood uh, the use and the form of question tags now move on to uh, practice Ah, before the practice, we have an exceptional case. Normally speaking, we have a lot of exceptions, but the most important one is this one. I, inc I included only one in order not to uh, uh, just overload you with a lot of information. So I am Moroccan. What do you think the question tag would be here? Normally speaking, according to my explanation, you would say, I'm not I, okay? But it, it's just, it's, it's, it sounds awkward, very heavy, we cannot say it easily, you see? That's why we have, an, it's considered as an exception. So we say, I am Moroccan, aren't I? So whatever, whenever, sorry, you have I am, it becomes aren't I? So here comes the time for the practice. So, for the first exercise, I'd like you to match each sentence with the right question tag. Correction. So, for the first one, we have the word shouldn't. It becomes should and we have you. So, you shouldn't answer all the questions. Should you? The second one, you didn't tell him the truth. When the sentence is in the negative form, it's easier for you to form the question tag. So you, John didn't tell him the truth. So we keep, we have did, didn't, it becomes did. And John, we replace it with he. So this is the answer of uh, uh, example two. Example three of here, my uncle will travel tomorrow. Here we have will, it's a modal verb too, but it's an indication of the future. So. We have Will and we have my uncle. Of course, you're going to replace my uncle with he and then we're going to put Will in the negative form. And the negative form is will not, so we put it into the contraction form. It becomes won't, won't he. By the way, here we cannot have the full form. We have only the short form. Every, uh, every time you cannot say is not she, isn't she. For the for example, Selma speaks German. That's a verb in the simple present form. So the negative form of speaks is doesn't speak. So we use doesn't, which is the auxiliary verb. And we replace Selma with she. So it becomes doesn't she. For number five, John can't carry this heavy box. So we replace John with he and can't with can. It becomes can he. And for the last example, and this is the exception we talked about, I am speaking English now, and the answer is aren't I, as in the exception, of course. Now, it's your turn now to answer this uh, uh, question, to do this exercise, please. You fill in the blanks along with the right uh, question tag. So, answers. Mr. McGuinness is from Ireland, isn't he? The car isn't in the garage, is it? You are John, aren't you? She went to the library yesterday, didn't she? Because the, the negative form of went is didn't go. 
He did not recognize me, did he? Cars pollute the environment. Don't they? The negative form of pollute is don't pollute and cars is replaced with they because they here replaces animals, objects, people, whatever. Number seven, Mrs. Pritchard can be in Scotland now, can't she? Eight, the trip is very expensive, isn't it? He won't tell you. Here, he won't. It's he will not. So, so we remove the negation, all right? And we, we, we are left with the will he. And the last example, of course, you and his brother had a red car, didn't they? Because here we have two people, you and his brother. So, for the writing today, that is uh, uh, part of Unit uh, 8, which is concerned about uh, science and technology, we're going to see how to form, how to write uh, a complete email. Of course, now you know, with the advance of technology nowadays, people rarely write letters, and instead, they prefer to write uh, emails in order to communicate with one another. It's easier, it's more practical. So here is the form of writing a personal, here I've chosen just a personal email. It means an email that you can send only to your uh, uh, friend or pample, a person who lives like, for example, in the United States or in England, all right? So how to write him or her uh, an email. So the first one is the, the to, uh, sorry, the from. So you write here your email, whether you have a Gmail, Hotmail, whatever. The next section is Two, you write your friend's uh, email. Third, we have the dates. In English, of course, as you know, we start with the month first and then we have the day. So we say September 13th or April 2nd, whatever. Then you have the, the topic. If you write, for example, the email to your friend about last holiday, so you write last holiday. If you write about Moroccan food, so you write as a title, Moroccan uh, food, in order to make it easier for the, the one who receives your email to know what the email is about, of course. Then you have the, the greeting. Of course, you can, um, you can write hi, because it's just personal, informal, you see? You can write hi, Shannon, uh, dear James, uh, dear Ali, uh, you see? So uh, whatever you want to choose, uh, no problem. Of course, then comes the, the message, okay? And when you, want, when you finish, uh, you close it uh, with the end. You can write by as mentioned here, you can write your best friend and you write your name, you can write, uh, for example, with love, uh, my best wishes, of course, because since it's just uh, informal. So these are the steps of writing a personal informal uh, email. Now, as homework, I'd like you to write me a personal email, respecting the steps that follow a beer. Write an email to your friend, describing where you went last holiday. Imagine, for example, you travel to a place, Marrakesh, Agadir, Paris, whatever. So you describe, you write an email with the purpose of describing this place uh, for your friend and encouraging him or her to visit that place. Don't forget to respect the steps of writing an email, as I mentioned earlier. These ideas may help you just to uh, organize your uh, email and the message of your email. Where did you go? How long did you stay there? Who did you go with? What activities did you do? And what did you like best about the trip? You can add, you can eliminate, no problem, but you write me a complete email describing your last holiday. Finally, good luck, stay at home and stay safe.